So welcome back. What we just saw in part three is that when we have a stochastic matrix, we always know that lambda equals one is an eigenvalue. And we're gonna take advantage of that fact in a minute. But first of all, what we're gonna do is define what a steady state vector is. So if we have a stochastic matrix, a steady state vector uh, for the matrix P is a probability vector is the probability vector Q such that PQ is equal to Q. So it kind of makes sense why we would call it a steady state because multiplying that vector uh, Q by P doesn't change it. So it's a steady state, no change or equilibrium. It's equal, everything stays the same. And so Q is a steady state vector. When we look at this equation, that means that Q is an eigenvector of lambda equals one. And we know lambda equals one is an eigenvector of our stochastic matrix. That's what we just proved. That is also, that is also a probability vector. So one way to think of a steady state vector is to find an eigenvector of lambda equals one and make sure that it's a probability vector. So because of this way of defining a steady state vector, we can actually use this to find steady states for, for our uh, various examples. So let, let's say we wanna find the steady state vector for our population model or our immigration or migration model between the uh, two planets. So what we need to do is first find the eigenvectors for lambda equals one. So we do our usual procedure. So it's kind of good review, kind of everything that we've learned in this course. So we first take P. So here's our matrix P and we're gonna subtract one minus the identity. So we're just subtracting the identity matrix and we're getting the values negative 0.05, 0.3, 0.05, 0.3, 0.3, 0 0.05 and minus 0 0.03. Then we have to find all solutions to this system. And you can see that here, I'll just put the coefficient matrix. Well, there's a lot of zeros here. Let me space things out a bit more. 0 0.03, 0 0.05, uh, negative 0 0.03. That this is going to be the same as a row equivalent to 0 0.05 negative 0 0.03, zero, zero. And so we see that X2 is free. X2 is free. So this implies that X1 is equal to negative 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.5, uh, X2, and we can rewrite this as minus 3 fifths. Uh, oops, sorry. I, there should be no negative here because I moved it to the other side. Uh, three fifths x two, right? So all solutions. Uh, so in particular, the eigenspace of lambda equals one is three fifths one times t, as we let t run through r. All right. So this is the eigenspace. of lambda equals one. So this is kind of the stuff we've learned in chapter five. And now what we're interested in is the steady state vector. So we're looking for an eigenvector. Uh, so that means it has to be in this set because it contains all the eigenvectors of lambda equals one. That's also a probability vector. Okay, so let me write that down. So need to pick the vector in this set that is also a probability vector, okay? So IE, what we want is to have 3 t plus t to be equaling to one. But now we can solve for t, right? Because we have 8 fifths t is equal to one, which means that T is equal to five eighths. So our steady state vector Q 
is going to be the vector that we get when we take t to be 5 eighths, so that we would have 3 fifths times 1 times the vector 5 eighths. This gives me the vector 3 eighths and 5 eighths. And if you were to put this into decimal form, what we get is 0 0.375. And here we get 0 0.625. And amazingly enough, this is actually the same answer from yesterday, where we used diagonalization. Okay, so there's a connection here between the steady state solution when you have a stochastic matrix and the procedure that we had from yesterday in order to find what happens to the limit. So we're going to pause here and then say one more thing about stochastic matrix before wrapping up the course.